just coming up to quarter to 11. Do send us your stories this morning if you've been the victim of a financial scam. New figures suggest such a scam is committed every 15 seconds. The number targeting bank customers has risen by half in the past year. The banking industry is launching a campaign today called Take 5, encouraging people to stop and think. If you get a call or an email from someone asking for your bank details... Text us 85058, call 0500 909 693 if you've had an experience like this. Have a listen to Christine Stanley from Birmingham, tricked into giving out her personal details by some people who came to her front door. They said they were the police, that they had arrested somebody who was in possession of my cards that had been cloned. So for me then to confirm which cards they were, I felt quite embarrassed I was um, just disbelieving. I'm of a generation that still has respect for the police force and would believe that some, when somebody tells me that who they are, I would believe them. Well, I used to. Not anymore. She was tricked into giving her details out. Gloria Honeyford was similarly scammed in a slightly bolder, a ludicrously bold way. Um, Gloria Honeyford presents Rip Off Britain, a very famous figure, very famous face. She had £120,000 taken from her account by someone impersonating her at a bank. In many of the scams, people will afterwards say, well, I made a mistake there, I shouldn't have trusted somebody. But in my case, my money, I think, is safely locked away in a bank. So really, I'm only speaking to you to say that it doesn't matter in terms of scams. You can think your money is safely in the bank, but in fact, in this case, it wasn't. And it's not to do with the fact that you're famous either, is it, particularly because the, the person at the bank um, you know, didn't think that this person particularly looked like you. They said they'd never, they'd, they'd never heard of you, so it wasn't like, as well, though... If, you, yeah. if you've seen the photograph, I'd like to think that there is nothing on my driving licence that would be remotely like the person who claimed to be me. Yes. Uh, couldn't be more opposite, and even allowing for a bad photograph on a faked piece of paper, passport, uh, driving licence, whatever. You couldn't equate the two. I understand somebody saying, well, I don't know who she is. I don't expect everybody to know who I am. Um, and, but the whole thing just seems a mystery to me. But it does serve as, as an instance to say that nothing is safe from scammers these days. They, even when you think your money is safely locked up in the bank, it isn't necessarily. That was Gloria Honeyford talking to Lucy Gray. Let's uh, speak to Katie Warbeck, Director of Financial Fraud Action. Uh, You've come out with these figures, Katie. Are you sure? A scam every 15 seconds? That's right, yes. We've seen these increase, as you say, uh, over 50% um, year on year. Um, So this is why we're bringing the Take 5 campaign, which we're launching today, which is um, aiming to try and help people from uh, becoming victims of fraud. What we're seeing, essentially, is that um, because the industry's um, closed down a lot of opportunities for fraudsters um, with secure systems and detection systems and prevention systems, they're turning to what they're seeing as the weakest link, which is us, the the poor consumer, uh, and uh, duping people into parting with their money. And the duping is generally being done how? We we heard somebody coming to the door pretending to be a a copper. Now, I mean, that's... That, that can't be that common because that's a very serious offence. So who's, who's going to take that risk? Well, uh, yes, uh, face-to-face is always the, the riskiest thing. So what we're seeing is people um, typically um, using the phone. So they will phone up and say they're either from the bank or from the police or in some cases from the government or Microsoft or you name, you know, you substitute any name here. Um, we're seeing um, people's all sorts of uh, organisations being taken in vain. Uh, the, the, but the same scam applies. These are people pretending to be somebody they're not. They've got a bit of information about you. They lull you into a full sense of security and then they probably put you under pressure, try and isolate you and uh, make you do essentially things that you probably wouldn't do if you stopped and thought about it for five minutes. Just have a listen, Katie, to Chris, who's called us from Lytham. Chris, what happened to you? Uh, Good morning. Um, I had my uh, debit card uh, cloned um, 17 different transactions were uh, taken out of my account, totaling about £1,100 over a, literally a couple of hours. Um, the concern I had about the whole experience, the bank were great. Uh, the issue I had was with the police. Um, I... Hang on, let me th- just stop you there. Let's just talk about the story so far. We'll come back to the police aspect. But okay. So cloning, I mean, you're blameless there. You can't, there was nothing you did. Quite. There's nothing you did that... 
that made your card more clonable than anybody else's. Uh, correct. Right. So, so OK. So, OK, th- this is different from somebody showing up at your door pretending to be a copper or somebody yeah. calling you f- and pretending to be somewhere else. So this is, look, the demands, demands completely blameless here. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I would hope Chris uh, got his money back from the, from the bank uh, to replace those transactions. So, yes, what Take 5 is about is those um, more insidious crimes where people are pretending to be who they're not uh, and scamming people into giving money away or, or moving it from one, tran- one account to another. Uh, and uh, that's, that's where the difference is here. So um, where, where you've been, uh, you know, the innocent victim of fraud, someone's taken money off your card, you, you're due your money back. If, you're, um, if you transfer uh, money from one account to another, then there's no guarantee we can get that money back for you. So um, that, that's the real issue here. So, but so, what are you doing about the cloning of cards, or what can be done about the cloning of cards? Well, the um, we're clo- you know the whole opportunity to use cards once they're cloned is has been reduced substantially now that the uh, US are moving finally moving to introducing chip and pin. Um, chip and pin is now in use over most of the world um, and as a result we've cut we've cut down those types of crime where counterfeit cards are used in america i mean i i, I bought sort of four thousand quids worth of jewelry in uh, in manila did you without knowing i'd done so but i mean <laughs> well, that was uh, so that was um, what we call a card not present fraud so using it over the internet or or, or telephone i imagine um rather than the card being used um copied and used physically um was that how it worked for well you? I, I don't know i mean i just I, I just knew i got a call saying have you <laughs> yeah. bought four thousand quids worth of, of, of jewelry in manila so and there, I, and there's, I no. there's the example of a, of a good a bank fraud detection system in action picked up the transaction and advised you of it before, before you probably even knew anything had happened. Well, it wasn't that good because they didn't call me until I was in a situation I needed to use my card in a hurry mm-hmm. and then embarrass me in a petrol station or oh, something dear. by not taking the card. So, yeah. I mean, there was a certain amount of inconvenience. Let's just go back to Chris. You said, mm. so, so why were the police involved? You said they annoyed you. What, what, what was it about? Yeah, well, is it, sorry, just that, that point that was just made, that was very interesting because I didn't know anything about it until I presented my card and that was declined. The bank didn't seem uh, concerned about 17 different transactions in the Bank of India in India to be concerned and didn't contact me. But going back to the police, um, I contacted the bank and of course they said, well, you need a crime reference number, so go to the police, which I did. The police said, okay, I explained the circumstance, I'm going to be reimbursed if I get a crime reference number. The police said, well, we don't give crime reference numbers, we give incident numbers. So I went back to the bank, that wasn't acceptable, and backwards and forwards I went. And in the end, the police conceded that the reason they weren't giving me a crime reference number was because I wasn't the aggrieved party, because the bank were, because they were going to be out of pocket, not me. And I reminded them that, in fact, I wouldn't be reimbursed unless I got the crime reference number, not the other way around. OK. But, uh, that's how, well, okay you, but you, weren't fi- you might not be financially out of pocket, but... You, well, you're I still because they uh, wouldn't have given me the crime uh, reference number. OK, and I understand that, but also this assumes there's no value on your time. I don't know how busy you are, but I thoroughly resent the idea that I can spend... You know, I, I, haven't, I haven't, it hasn't cost me anything when I've spent three hours or a whole afternoon trying to deal with it. It has well, cost me. It's an, yes. it's an afternoon in your life you're never going to get back. Absolutely right, but the only, the only way I eventually got the crime reference number was when I said to the police, you, you must give me this because I'm not going to be reimbursed in, instead... Uh, They then changed tack and said, well, we can't give you a crime reference number anyway because the crime didn't happen in this country. It happened in uh, in India, outside the jurisdiction. Uh, And then I then reminded him that my card had never been to India and therefore it had been cloned in this country, which is a crime. Therefore, can I have a crime reference number? At which point he gave it me. But I'm a solicitor. Now, I had the nous to understand how these things work and to persuade him to give me a crime reference number. But I shouldn't have to... Uh, call upon that guile to persuade the police to give me something that I think I'm entitled to. So where are you on that one then, Katie? Oh, uh, so in se- I mean, I think uh, this is a very interesting thing. I mean, did this happen a while ago, Chris? Uh, uh, yes, I'd probably, I'm, I'm guessing now, but probably seven, eight, nine years ago. Yeah, I think um, the situation has improved in the UK because uh, since action fraud came into being, where you can, re- they're, they're geared up to take reports of fraud, whereas local police forces probably didn't really have the, the, the wherewithal or indeed the knowledge to, to deal with these types of crimes. So these days, action fraud, which is run by the City of London Police, who are partnering with the 
Morris in this Take 5 campaign. Um, they uh, take the reports of fraud and then they, essentially they, look, they put all the, the intelligence reports together and that helps build a picture of where these crimes are taking place and then they can uh, act on that, which is, whereas before, sort of disparate reports of fraud around the UK never really got um, put together to make a picture of where things are going. So I think things have improved probably since your experience. I hope, Chris, if it, if it were to happen to you today, I think you'd find that it would be quite different. Well, I would hope so. Mm-hmm. But the trouble is there's nothing you can do any differently in your behaviour, is there? Because you, no. you, you didn't do anything in the first place, Chris. Quite. I, I, I struggle to understand what I could do differently. I mean, I, I must confess I'm much more vigilant with machines now, but I still to this day don't know where it was cloned, so it's very difficult to be vigilant against something that you don't, uh, you mm-hmm. don't understand. All right, Chris, have a good day. Thanks for your call. That was Chris in Lither. Margaret in Preston. How are you, Margaret? I'm absolutely fine, thank you, Adrian. You got fire away. What, what happened to you? Well, um, about six weeks ago, I was looking on the website of a famous uh, high street store and they had an offer on for beauty products, which looked very nice. For uh, You could have a trial period and all you had to pay for was the postage and packing. So I duly paid the postage and packing, which was about £5, something like that, uh, and got the products, which are absolutely lovely. I don't really do what they say they were going to do because I've still got wrinkles, but never mind, that's (laughs) one of those things, isn't it? This isn't Katie's field of expertise. She can't yes, talk... Don't ask me about beauty, no, please. Okay. Can't everything, can <laughs> right. you? So, um, about uh, four weeks after I had re- received the original products, I got another packet of the same products, which I hadn't sent for, hadn't asked for, or anything. So I had a look in my bank, and this company had taken £90 out for one product and £104 out for the other, plus postage and packing. And I, re- I panicked a bit, really, then, because I didn't quite know what to do. Uh, there was a telephone number which came with the uh, second lot of products, but I didn't want to ring it because I thought it might cost an arm and a leg to ring the number. So I rang the bank, and they were absolutely wonderful. Didn't say I was a stupid woman or anything like that. Um, and the, the young man that I spoke to said it's quite a usual scam, not necessarily for the company that has scammed me, but for companies selling but, maybe cleaning products or gardening. But I'm not. I, I don't them. quite get where the scam come in. I'm being a bit slow here. Katie, can you get your head around this one? Is this one you've come across? Well, I think um, essentially they're, they're uh, giving you goods you didn't ask for, um, and then charging you for it. Essentially, Margaret, is that that that's the uh, burden of it, really, isn't it? Um, and uh, but they were using the name of the high street store. Yes, they were, but it wasn't actually a high street store. Product. Apparently, it was a pop up or a cookie or whatever they call it. I'm not very internet savvy. <laughs> you mean both? Nothing to do with the high street store, as it turned out. Mm-hmm. Uh, the bank were wonderful. They refunded all of the money, um, and the money came through the same day into my, back into my account. The day after, I looked at my bank again, and this company had taken a further. £80. It said it was an ongoing visa transaction. Um, so I rang the bank again, who had, had stopped any further transactions, but said this one must have been in the pipeline mm. when they stopped it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, the only reason I'm ringing really, Adrian, is, is because other people might not have been quick enough to think to have a look in the bank. Mm. And they might have had a lot of money taken out. I mean, it turned out it was about £250, which I got back you know, somebody else might not get it back. Mm. Mm. So... Thanks, thanks very much for that. Thank, appreciate your call, Margaret. So where, your five points then, quickly take us through them, Kate. So um, what we're really saying is um, you, you should need to take back control of the situation. Um, this is what Take 5 is all about. It's about being able to stay in control uh, and just be able to stop, think and uh, take back this control. So never disclose your security details, your full PIN or password. Don't assume that a request you get by email or, or caller is genuine. Don't be rushed or pressurised, as often that's what they do. And listen to your instincts. So if you feel something's wrong, then it's probably right. You know, act on your instincts. And finally, this key point, staying in control. Um, you know, we have this trust reflex. Um, take a step back, put the phone down, Ask somebody else for advice and probably you'll find that you'll remember what it is you should be doing.
And so much is done on cards now, credit cards or debit cards. Just checking your statement is important, but your statement is often confusing because you, because the trading name, what appears on your credit card statement, can often bear no resemblance anyway to the to the shop that you bought it from. Yes, that sometimes happens, I agree. But you're right, the good advice is to always check your statement. And if you've got a query, then um, the bank will help you if you can't remember who the... the yeah, uh, but often the credit card company then will say they'll end up charging you if, you if it turns out that you did actually spend the money at such a company. Well, I, I mean, I think that's um, that's an individual case, I would think. But I, th- I would say, you know, check your statement, certainly. And then, you know, if you've got a query, ask them. And they can usually shed some light on who the company is. OK, thanks. Uh, thanks very much indeed. More on that online uh, from the uh, Financial Fraud Action and their Take 5 campaign to avoid being financially scammed. In the next hour, the return of Britain's Paralympians from Rio.